The week that led up to it, I just felt like there was no real pressure, even though when you look back and you go, jeez, if we'd lost that night, would you mind? we wouldn't be left out of the place. But yet, that week, there was no real, even before the game, it was nervous energy, but it was never like, I'm afraid to go out there. I, I, like, I always felt confident, as you said, that we were going to win. Was that week the week where you lost the head about a, a corner in a, in a training game? Could have very well have been, yeah. <laughs> so, just to bring you back, everyone <laughs> buzz in, having a small side of game, banter going on. It was competitive, but, you know, nothing too much. Kearney being Kearney, there was nothing happened. And the next thing all we heard is Kearney screaming at Rico and they're nearly squaring up and Kearney's <laughs> head is just gone. And we all got such a shock that we were looking at each other thinking, is this really happening? And then mm. we laughed, Rico laughed, and then I think you eventually laughed two weeks later. But <laughs> I suppose yeah, I think if, that was if, a build up of energy. If the players hadn't laughed at the time, I think yeah, Rico could have pulled the head off on the same day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it, there was no real nerves, but there was obviously build up, yeah. you know, internally with, with people, obviously yeah. you. <laughs> when you just look back on it and, and think about the feeling, I suppose, of, of scoring the goals and, mm -hmm. you know, huge rubbish celebration where you pull the top over the shoulder. I mean, I remember when, when your first one went in, I was just thinking, yes, thank God. <laughs> yeah. As much as I felt confident, we just needed that first goal. And when it went in, it was, I think it was Roy, was it Roy put in a great ball, mm -hmm. great finish and... I knew then we were on the way, like. And, and uh, I, we, me, and we probably felt the same thing with the second, with your one. Yeah. Like, now that's a, a small bit off, because Paddy McCord came on. Just as he was coming yeah. on, yeah. McDevine yeah. had a great save, and yeah. you're thinking, this could go anyway, yeah. it's in but the balance. It, it, that's, you know what, it just shows it, it's small moments, like, you're thinking Paddy McCord's coming on, and just as he's coming on, we get the second, and mm -hmm. it kind of just completely killed him. You know, I know they yeah. got a second wind a little bit, and a few more chances. But I think the second goal, as you said, was important just to get it, you know. Yeah, I suppose, uh, personally, um, once the final whistle went, it was just pure kind of, I don't know, relief and just the feeling of we did it, you know. I think the, leading up to the last game, we'd probably thrown away a few points and possibly should have been a lot more comfortable than having to win the last game. So I suppose I just remember seeing my family after the game. Um, I think my, my uncle had died that year and my aunt had come on. So it was just emotional, really. But... Um, yeah, it was just a special, like, hmm. special time. Yeah, just the, it, it, we actually have it now. I suppose we're 2 up. There's still game time to be played. It, the whistle hasn't gone. It's when the whistle goes, all the emotion comes out then and you nearly go into a, a limpness of the body. Yeah. But yeah, I was the same thing. I actually missed the lads bringing so the trophy <laughs> into the shed. I was seeing where my parents were or my family were, so I went to them. Yeah. Um, it was only afterwards I knew that Georgie had brought, brought it into the shed and all the boys were coming in, but... It was just to kind of, you know, add the fans who had been a massive part of the whole yeah. season or my whole time or your whole time at, mm. at Cork, give them back something. And yeah. it was the last night of the shed. It was just, it was fitting really yeah. that it all happened around that time and around this area where, where we're yeah. sat in now. Like. I think when you look at the squad we had too, there were so many home-based players and, you know, it meant, it meant something more even. You know, I know everyone plays for club and they're going to give everything, but when you're from Cork and you've experienced the atmosphere a few previous seasons to that, and I suppose we were always building to winning the league and to fa finally get, get to that point and do it in front of your own crowd and with the fact the shed was getting knocked, I think it was just, it was amazing. Mm. Definitely one to put in the scrapbook. Yeah. <laughs> so even recently just seeing fans wearing replica jersey or fans wearing the old jersey that we would have worn in, in 05 just brings back them memories but it brings back if i see that jersey i can say that reminds me of georgie for for whatever reason <laughs> it obviously brings you back to 05 but you know when you see specific jerseys you think of a specific player yeah. suppose there's a white liverpool jersey if you see anyone wearing it you think of i think of fernando torres yeah you know dave barry is the previous generation jersey, if you see that wearing anyone wearing it, I just think of, of Dave Barry, it's Georgie yeah. for whatever reason yeah. on that, or Hoggy as well, <laughs> Georgie or Hoggy for whatever reason, but it obviously brings back the memory of, of 05, yeah. so it's actually great to see. Mm. Um, and as I said, every one of my family had that jersey, so yeah. sometimes they, they wear it now and then as well. Of course. Um, and there was an incident, we, we didn't, for the whole season, we didn't realise till we got the jersey framed and, and put it up in my room. It was a misspelling of O'Flynn on the back. No I don't way. know where my dad got it <laughs> done, but yeah. Oh God, yeah. <laughs>